is your own family, but you take a position and role that I have to mobilize my neighbors, I have to mobilize my community. And when I say community, I mean the entire state of Utah. <laughs> so you pour yourself into this work, and I guess I'm asking why? Like, you could have just said, I'm gonna protect my flock, my sheep, but you are relentless in pursuing these policies for the entire state. Where does that urgency and why do you do that? Yeah, I, I think that the first thing that you said, my flock and my sheep, it comes down to my faith. It comes down to the, uh, I believe in the individual and that comes, that comes from a, a religious place, but it also comes from a human and a lived experience place that the individual is limitless. We are without potential when we, um, or without, without limited potential, but when we are pushed into a collective. So what I do is I speak against ethnic studies and I speak very loudly against ethnic studies every chance I get. Because ethnic studies is not what people think. It's not learning about cultures. It's not reading a story to your child and, and, and showing them the, the past. It's teaching them a double helix of why, first, they are an oppressed group, whether that's because of their race or that is their gender or anything else. Even down, there's currently, I was sharing it with the people up here, there's currently a, a mandala of all of the different ways of intersectionality that you can be oppressed, including owning a car. So, I mean, absolutely anything can be a level of oppression. And I think that's such a disturbing way for our children and their mental health to, to look at the world and to think, these are all of the reasons that I'm oppressed, which is the first part of the deep double helix. The second part, and this is Christine Sleater, who actually is behind all of the ethnic studies books. Um, she's She's got things on YouTube that you can watch. If you watch just an ethnic studies promotional video, it's gonna leave, conveniently leave out the part that not only do they want your child to know their history, I have no problem with knowing their history. I go around the state literally performing area Tubman. I have no problem with people knowing their history. But what I do have a problem with is taking our kids, these kids with all the potential in the world, kids who we have went through to work for, we've done the work over and over again. Now, are we perfect? No. Behind closed doors, do we, do we have our biases? Yes. But if you want to tell me that only white people have those biases, I will fight you on that. And I know people say, don't fight, be peaceful. But every single person has their biases. So we work on them individually. But we don't take our biases and put them on the new generation. We start that new generation with hope. So that when your kid comes home and your little boy says to you, Mommy, in this book, you're, you and Daddy wouldn't have been able to be married. You say, yes, that's true. And isn't it amazing? Aren't you so lucky that you were born 50 years later when this isn't an issue, when Daddy and I can be married? Because the world progresses. And we, we can find the beauty in something. So ethnic studies has that one part, which is teaching people that they are a victim or that they are oppressed. That would be their word they would use as oppressed. And the second part is to dismantle the systems of oppression. That means to take down the West. That's literally what it means. It means to take down the West. So our liberation, what we're watching right now in, with Hamas, Whatever side you're on, either way, both sides of that group, those children are being learned, are, are being taught that the other side is against them. And the other thing that these kids are being taught, especially um, on the other side in Palestine, what they are being taught is that we should not be sovereign nations and that we should not, that the, the fact that they're a sovereign nation is the main reason they wanna take them down. They're taking them down because it's individuality. They do not want individuality. They want our children to be pawns. And then you ask for what? You're gonna take down the system. You're gonna dismantle the system. What's on the other side? Or you start looking and you go, who funds Castle? Oh wait, it's the biggest capitalist in the world. But yet our kids are going to the schools and they're saying down with capitalism. What do we want? We want everything we're not gonna have equitable outcomes with these people. 
It's not going to happen. So we are pawns, and the black people have been pawns since about the 1930s. The black people have been pawns. They went after their families, they went after their identities, they went after their dignity. And now they're turning around and they're doing that to all these other things. They're saying, look at your points of intersectionality. You're gay, you need to be in this club. And don't you dare step out of line in this club. You're trans, well, the whole world better support you. And when we need to support you, they better let down their own values. And when the last thing, I'm, the last point, sorry, I'm sure I'm talking too long. But the last point, is colonization. They will say we are we hate colonization and because of colonization we need to take everything. Meanwhile, we go around from our churches to our schools to our families and say if you don't believe the new way, you have a problem. And we're just gonna make you, we're going to force you. We're gonna force it through your kids and we're gonna force it on the parents and we're gonna force it in the schools. And if you don't like it, you're not gonna graduate. If you don't like it, you're gonna lose your job. If you don't like it, your wife's gonna divorce you. We're being colonized by the same people who constantly scream, down with colonization. That's my issue with ethnic studies. <laughs>